Good morning, everyone. We are heading into the chicken coop. I'm gonna fill up their feeder, and I also just wanted to give an update on how they are doing so far this winter. I'm grabbing their wet food that is frozen now and their water we're going to be refilling that and then I'm also grabbing these lights that we have hanging out here we have an O light with this attachment on it that turns it more into a lantern and it works fabulous for us outside we only have one solar light bulb that we charge inside the house and this one's also rechargeable and it works great we put this one out here and the chickens come outside in the morning and they also have the light bulb inside the coop Right now with the little light that we have, I think we're close to about five and a half hours. We are getting virtually no eggs. We get some eggs every once in a while, but it's really not very often. Only a few of these girls started laying when we went into the fall. So I suspected that we wouldn't be getting eggs throughout the winter and we'll probably pick back up production in the spring. That's okay with Eric and I. We could put a light out here longer if we wanted them to lay this winter, but I'm really not that concerned on pushing them for production. So far, everything's been great great with them. They seem to be tolerating the cold really well and this coop works great to minimize any sort of moisture buildup in here. We've been great with frostbite except for one occasion we did jump down to about zero degrees and two of our roosters got really really mild frostbite. This winter so far has been kind of wild. We've had snow and then now we're in this period of ice and we have warmer weather. We've warmed up to 47 degrees so right now it's just been ice outside. We have very little snow left and it is a little bit nicer for us because everything's not that frozen but we do need to be prepared because we are going to get back to those freezing temperatures again pretty soon. I'm gonna head inside and get the chicken some water and new food. Okay, I've got our clean water and food out here for the chickens. Other things I like to feed them in the winter is hot oatmeal, kefir, and sometimes some of the pumpkin seeds or innards that we have if we cut up one of our pumpkins. Now that we're done out here, we're gonna head inside and Eric's going to talk about some of the things we have going on inside the cabin. Okay guys, now that we're back inside, I wanted to go over a few things with you. The first thing is gonna be talking about our solar system. We've had our solar system installed for a little over a year now, and our solar system is what you would call a smaller solar system. It's a 2000 watt system, and we run it off of two panels. There are tons of different solar systems that you can get. You can have one big enough that it's gonna seem like you're not even on a solar system, or you can have a small one like us. Us not needing a lot of power, we opted to just get a small system. Some of the things that we run off of our solar system are our house, and our house is all LED lighting. We use our LED string lights most of the time that don't draw a lot of energy. And then in the summer, when we need to, we run our chest freezer, which is not a big strain on our system. And two of the other main ways we use our solar system, one is we have a 12 volt water pump that we use to run our sink and our shower. And the second is charging all of our tech gear, cameras, laptops, and our batteries. And the final part of our solar system, I guess you would call it, is our generator. So our generator is hooked straight into our house. So when our generator is running, Everything in the house is gonna be running off that generator and our batteries for our solar system are gonna get charged. We do have a well pump that we run off our generator, but our well pump can also be run off our solar system if need be. So a few weeks back, we had our first major problem with our solar system. Our inverter went out on us. Basically what happened is our inverter just started acting up. It was acting like it was drawing a lot of energy from our batteries when we had absolutely nothing plugged into it. And long story short, it ended up shorting out on us. I wasn't able to turn it off. I actually had to use my Leatherman and quickly disconnect the battery from it, which was kind of a scary situation, but we got it handled and under control. That was on the weekend, so there was really nothing we could do. I couldn't contact Xantrex, who makes this inverter, and ask them what was going on with it. And I also couldn't call the solar place that we got this from to see if there's anything I could do. So basically, we were kind of out of luck and we were back to like when we first moved here and we had absolutely no power at all. Monday morning came around, I called Xantrex, and to my surprise, it was a great company to work with. I told them what was going on and they immediately said, send me you guys' receipt, just showing that it's still under warranty. And I think these come with a two year warranty and we're gonna send you a brand new inverter. And we got our inverter within a week's time from them. And something really cool is this is actually a model that they just stopped making. This is the HFS 2000. 
they ended up sending us their brand new model that just came out and it's the XC2000. So we're actually really liking it. It has a ton more features on it and the fans are a lot quieter on it when we hook our generator to it or when it's pulling a big load. So all in all, the situation actually worked out really good for us. I haven't really covered exactly what an inverter is, so I'm gonna to try to do my best to explain that to you guys. I'm not an expert at all, but I have put in our own solar system and been using this thing for about a year now. So technically, this is not just an inverter, this is an inverter charger. So what an inverter does is when you have a solar system that runs off batteries, those are DC power, and you need to convert that to AC power to run normal things, such as lights, charging a laptop, um, plugging anything in like a microwave or a toaster or something like that. So that is where the inverter comes into play. This basically changes it from your DC power to your AC power. And this is an inverter charger, like I said. So this is also capable of charging batteries when I have a generator hooked into it. So let's talk about the week when we didn't have our inverter. We basically went back to no power at all, except for when we wanted to run our generator to power the house. We don't like to run our generator when we don't need to. Um, it's not the most fuel efficient in the world, but it's not too bad, but we just don't like spending the extra money on gas if we don't need to. The inverter going down on us couldn't have happened at a worse time since we're almost at our darkest day of the year. We're a little over five and a half hours of sunlight right now, so most of the time it's dark. So we need a lot of light just to live our daily lives. So keeping things charged like our laptops and our camera gear and things like that was kind of a pain. We had to pretty much have the generator running for a couple hours every single night and just plug everything in and get everything charged the best we could. And then on the counter here is some of the other stuff that I'm going to go over that we used that week that we didn't have any power. So I'm going to start with our least favorite thing to use, and that is just a, a Coleman propane lantern. These things are relatively cheap, and so are the canisters, but these also go through the propane really fast. So this thing's good for camping. It's good for here in an emergency. Puts off a ton of light, but we don't like to use it just because these things are, I think, like four bucks, and they don't last very long at all. So we used through our full propane tank on this pretty fast. So I think the thing that we ended up using the most just to kind of light our living room area was just our O-Light with our lantern attachment on it. This thing, it doesn't take much time to get it fully charged when we have the generator running and we've never actually got this thing dead. So this battery lasts a long time in this and it had no problem lighting up our whole entire living room for us. And then we've talked about our Yeti before, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this, but this is another thing that every time we had the generator running, we made sure to plug this in and get it charged. We could run our laptops off this, we could plug in lights on this, and we could charge our cell phones from this. So this definitely came into good use that week. And that's pretty much what we did. We kept things really simple. Luckily, our water pump is 12 volts, so we still had running water, which was really nice. But as far as lighting, like I said, we just ran the generator about an hour to two hours every single night charged everything up and just had lower light in the house. And now I want to talk about one more thing and that's why we're switching away from traditional flashlights and moving to all rechargeable lights. You may think that we have a lot of flashlights here and are always mentioning flashlights and to be honest with you, before moving here to Alaska, we didn't use flashlights too often and I didn't realize how much we were actually gonna need them once we did move here. So we get down to about five hours and 20 minutes of sunlight on our shortest day and we use a lot of flashlights. There's just no way around it. We're always outside doing stuff. We're always inside working on projects and we don't have a lot of light. So there's either a flashlight in our pocket or there's a headlamp on our head. So up until recently, this is kind of some of the stuff we've been using for flashlights. We have just your traditional big mag light, which works great, but it does go through batteries. And then we've got a couple stream lights that we keep up by our bed. These don't go through too much light because we don't use them very often. And we have our big lantern that we use. This one goes through batteries pretty quick too. It is an LED light, but it takes 8D batteries to get this thing going, and this is non-rechargeable. And the main thing that uses the batteries for us is our headlamps. So this is one that Ariel's been using. This is a Petzl. This takes three AAA batteries. She doesn't use her headlamp as much as me, but this goes through three batteries in about a week, which isn't very good at all. This was my main headlamp, it's a Princeton Tech Remix, and this takes three AAA batteries as well. It's a little more powerful than that one, but this will go through three batteries in about three days. So I was switching out the batteries twice a week in this. And this is one of Ariel's new headlamps, which is not rechargeable, but we're actually really liking this one, and it's just a Duracell headlamp. So this is the one she's been using for now. As you can tell, going through three sets of batteries once a week was really killing us on buying AAA batteries. Luckily, we reached out to Olight and they were nice enough to send us their new headlamp, which is right here. When I first got this thing in the mail from them, I'm gonna be honest, my first review of it was, man, that thing is big, but it's actually really comfortable. It's lightweight 
and it puts these lights to shame. This thing has a max output, I think, of like 2,000 lumens, and I believe these are only a couple hundred. Best thing about Olight, along with most of their flashlights, is they're rechargeable, and the charge lasts a very long time on them. And things like small flashlights like these, recharging them on our small solar system is really not a big deal. Every day I just throw these on the charger, and these always have a full charge on them. We've only had this headlamp for a short while, but I gotta tell you, I'm loving it. I can walk around in the yard, not have to worry about using too much of the juice because I'm gonna have to replace the batteries, which was always my main concern with these ones. I always had it on the lowest setting because I knew I was gonna be going through the batteries. So this thing, it just lights up our whole entire yard, which is really cool. If this flashlight is anything like our other O lights, we're really in for a good flashlight because we've had these ones for a couple months now and these have been nothing but awesome for us. And another really cool feature about this headlamp is it actually just pops right off of your headband and you can use it wherever you want. It comes with a clip on it too, so you can clip it on your shirt. And this thing's magnetic, and it can also just be used handheld, like this. So I'm gonna have Ariel jump in here with me, and we're gonna answer some more of your guys' questions. One last thing I wanted to mention before we continue was on our inverter. I actually did end up taking this thing apart and I found out where it shorted out. There's two sections where it burned a little bit of the wiring. And I called the guy who I got our solar system from and he recommended that I just keep this thing as a spare. He said that this thing can easily be rebuilt. So that's what we're going to do. This thing is going to go in the Connex and hopefully nothing happens to our other inverter. But if it does, we'll be able to rebuild this one and still use it. The question that we get a lot is how do we deal with the lack of daylight? And I think that's honestly varies for both of us, so Eric will probably answer it and I'll answer it. And this is our second winter here, so it is a little bit different than last year. The first winter we got here, or we got here in the fall, it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal as far as just no sun or less sun. We don't ever get down to where there's no sun. I know that's a thought for Alaska, but Alaska is a huge state, so you know, as you further north you go, there are places that do actually have no sun for quite a while, but the further south you go, they have a little more. And regardless, it is a lot less sun than most of the United States or even some other countries. Last year, I didn't think it affected me that much, but it did because I really wanted to hibernate, basically. It makes you want to sleep in a lot more when it doesn't get light until 10 o'clock. For, so for me, that was extremely difficult to get up early, and we like to get up early. We like to get up at 6 or 7. You know, we don't want to sleep in. And this year, it was hard again. I kind of passed that hump a little quicker and started to get up earlier, especially with our chickens and us needing to get up early to get their light out there. But there's definitely still that feeling like you just want to stay asleep. I don't know how to explain it, but that's the biggest thing for me. It doesn't seem to make us unhappy on any other level. You know, we still go about and do all our own stuff in the dark. Yeah, like Ariel said, we don't get down to just zero sunlight, so it's not that extreme. And honestly, this year, I think it's been pretty good for me. I haven't really noticed the lack of light, I guess. And we're almost at our winter solstice, and after that point, the days start getting even longer. So where we're at now, I think we're a little over five and a half hours of, of daylight. So to me, it hasn't been that bad this year at all. I'm sure the longer you live here, the less it seems to affect you. I don't think it really affects everyone the same way, but it's really not as bad as you would think is all I can say. And on another note, candles are something both Eric and I really love, but economically, it's just not economic for us to use them. So that is why we stick with this type of technology. And on my end, the Olight flashlights are they're incredible. So I don't, I mean, Eric's more the flashlight person in the house. I'm just the one that grabs it. But this size for me, the handle is 100% perfect. I love grabbing it when I go to the outhouse or if I go to some of the chickens or even the bees at night. And I absolutely love it. I have very high recommendations for it. and so practical for us to charge them. We're not going to have to buy batteries at all anymore, which is really great. Olight's going to be having a big sale coming up just in time for Christmas. It's going to be the 16th through the 19th, I believe. They're going to have a few different sales. Yeah, they're marking stuff all the way up to, I believe, 40% off. We're going to leave that information in our description if you guys are interested. That's all we have for you guys today. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Just in time for Christmas. It's going to be the 16th through the 19th of December. Say that again. It's going to be the 16th. It's going to be the 16th through the 19th of December. It's going to be the 16th. Why can't I say 16th? 16th. Okay. T H T. Okay. It's going to be the 16th. I can't say it. Okay, hold on. Give me I'll some water. That. I need some I'll water. It. It's going to be. So, so we saw. And two of the. There's tons of different.
fun with our solar system. Our solar system, our, our solar system, but our solar system in, and our solar system is what you would call a smaller solar system.